Hi, Fiona. It's so Hi. nice to speak to you this morning. Hi, nice to catch up with you. And we have got a few things we're going to chat through. Um, obviously, I know you already, which is lovely because we've we've been able to work together and um, we've also bumped into each other at yoga classes. And at other uh, various activities along the, along the path. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what I would like to ask you first is how you describe yourself and your work. Um, well, I would say I was a, a music producer, a singer and songwriter, and I work with electronic sounds and my own voice in a, pro, a digital music program called Logic, which I use on my laptop to make mute, so some sort of straight kind of music tracks, but I also do kind of more soundscaping things. And as well as working on my own individual music projects, I've also done some collaborations with other artists, like I've worked with filmmakers and with theatre as well. But the thing I'm mostly focused on at the moment is, um, is my own songwriting and music production and the, the logic. That's great. I mean, I guess, you know, people wouldn't necessarily expect uh, people to be doing this type of work in the northeast of Scotland. Um, so you're, you're originally from Aberdeenshire. Yeah, originally from Aberdeen. And I uh, I went, I left Aberdeen when I was quite young, about maybe I was 18, I think. I started off at, um, I went to Aberdeen University to do languages. But when I was on the course, I was doing um, in the, the student performances. And I found that I was enjoying performing and doing the student shows so much more than my coursework. So I decided to change track. So I found a course in performing arts in London. So I left Aberdeen when I was about 17, I think. Um, I did a degree in performing arts. And it was like dabbling in dance and drama and music. It was quite a really sort of broad degree. Um, then, from then I just, so I discovered that I, I really my favourite part of the course was dance. So I wanted to pursue that. So then I um, went to study contemporary dance at the place, London School of Contemporary Dance. Um, although I dabbled in a bit of music on the course, I went down a sort of dance path. And um, there... That must have been quite an intense training. It was very intense. It was really intense. And how... And I absolutely hated it. <laughs> after after having been this thing that I was sort of to, so totally focused on, and then got there and discovered it was just like not what I wanted to do. It was just like so strict and so like ivory tower and like really ultra professional and really narrow. And I had a really broad, wide range of interests, including like punk music and the community arts movement, which was just starting up at that time. And I found that the, the sort of elitism of the course I was doing was so rubbing against all the other things that I was influenced by in London at that time, like the punk and the music. So I kind of basically abandoned the course and then joined a punk band as you do <laughs> so that's how the uh, that's how the music started off yeah so that's i started amazing. off yeah. yeah so you 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 really hadn't aimed in that particular direction and it was by yeah. the dance that you you came to music yeah definitely definitely it was because through choreographing dance pieces at college and then i started thinking about making a music piece that was came out of the dancer's body so that's kind of how i got into music so i i work with synthesizers and uh brain wave machines blah blah to make a, a sound piece for a, a, a choreographic piece that i was working on so that's where that yeah i did get a, a bit interested in music while i was studying dance but then it's evolved more down the down the music track yeah and through being in the punk band like you know in the punk the sort of traditional thing is everyone like swaps instruments all around so i started off playing drums and i was rubbish i played a bit of saxophone and that was rubbish played bass guitar i was rubbish at that as well and then when i got on the microphone i loved it so ever since then that's been my my focus and my path was going right i want to sing yeah 
That's great. Sometimes just by doing, it's the only way to to find out where, where yeah, it's supposed never, to be. It's never, it's never really had a place. No, I've never had a kind of plan. I've just like let things evolve, and that, that's quite more, more exciting and more interesting rather than having a, a master plan here. <laughs> Yeah, and and eventually, of course, you've kind of returned after after all of these sort of experiences down in in London, and you were in Brighton as well, yeah. weren't you? I've just, got, I've just got to jump in here and tell and say it was so weird when I was looking through the the list of questions that you'd uh, sent me, and the last question was uh, something like, "Have you got a favourite space in the art gallery or a favourite artwork?" And then it, all these memories came flooding back of things that I'd completely forgotten about when I was studying dance in London. In my holidays, I'd come up to Aberdeen to stay with my parents, and I'd want something creative and interesting to do. And there wasn't really much going on at the time, so I did a dance workshop in Aberdeen Art Gallery in the sculpture court with kids interacting with the sculptures. And here I am back in Aberdeen Art Gallery. <laughs> That's amazing, it's gone and full I, circle. No, and until I read that question of yours, I'd completely forgotten that I even did that. So yeah, yeah. it was yeah, really, I, it's really I, nice. Similar moment. Circular pattern there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a lot of people say that about Aberdeen Art Gallery because it's been kind of there in their in their childhood and they've just absorbed it and kind of kind of almost taken it for granted at that point yeah. in their life. And it's not until later that they realise, oh, that's actually really important and really special. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a great story. So I, I now know you can do choreography in the sculpture course. <laughs> have you done one there as well? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have, but but you know, um, yeah, that's another story. Let's go and let's stay with you, Fiona, today. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so eventually you, you you kind of made the the, the the move back to Aberdeenshire, and I'm I you know, and it's it's wonderful um, that uh, we have. Uh, lots of different kind of artists making different types of work based in Aberdeenshire and you know I'm always keen to throw a spotlight on that and I, I just wondered how you found you know being part of the um, arts community in the northeast of Scotland. Well, it, to tell you the truth when I first arrived back in Aberdeenshire I found it really hard to find a community and it's I still do find it quite hard but um and because I'm sort of quite a distance away from the town, I don't get an awful opportunity to actually go into Aberdeen still. So I do still feel quite isolated in a way, but I have found that the people, the artists that I do meet so stick together and like become a real like little gang together and really support each other and like work together. Like I've been working with Dude and Dance for quite a few years now. So people don't know that an uh, experimental theatre film performance group that are surprisingly based in Huntley. Um, they're originally from London, but they've been in, in Aberdeenshire for about 21 years now. So uh, we've done quite a bit of work together. And it's really nice having that solid backup, not feeling that you're not like totally out in a limb on, on your own. It's, but I mean, I think there's a lot of traditional arts things like there's the neos and there's a lot of visual artists and um, photographers printmakers but there, i have found that there aren't a lot as i i can see so far of more experimental uh sort of multi-discipline things here i think because there doesn't seem to be much at the moment much infrastructure or networking or platforms really for that sort of work. So, because, like, for example, Dude and Dance, although they've been based in the Northeast for 21 years, the majority of their work is in, well, up until the pandemic, was in Europe and in Germany and in London. And they just sort of used Huntley as their base to develop work and then they take it further afield because there isn't really an audience for it here. But we're hoping that that's going to change. Hoping that that's going to change because we've decided that. We love it. Is that I think it's being in the pandem pandemic has really shone a spotlight on how privileged and lucky we are to be here. So we've made the definite decision to really 
make strong roots in the area and work together and try and develop things more rather than just abandoning it going and going off to Glasgow or whatever um, to develop more things in, in Aberdeenshire and hopefully make more collaborations with, with other artists and grow a stronger network. Yeah. 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 I, I'd say, yeah, it's definitely been a time that's kind of um, focus our thoughts, hasn't it, on where we are and is this where we want to be? Yeah. And um, it's such a, a sort of inspiring region in, in lots of ways. So we'll we'll talk about your most recent project in a wee bit. Yeah. It's yeah. very much based yeah, uh, here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, well, I was just, I was going to ask you about the pandemic, but I think we've kind of covered that now, haven't we? And, so, think, yeah, so let's... Another, let's another, so I'll just say briefly, you know, I think another thing about the pandemic that was really good for me was um, really focusing, giving, giving me the, the time to focus really intensely on a project. It was kind of like having a individual artist's retreat, you know, just in my house in the countryside with no distractions, there's nothing, nowhere to go, nothing to do, nobody to see. So all I had to do was just do my work and it was perfect because it's quiet and it's, uh, I was really able to focus and get a massive slab of work done, which if I'd been maybe in the city or in the normal circumstances with lots of busyness going on, I wouldn't have been able to do that so easily, I don't think. So, yeah, it's turned out really well for me. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's great when, you, when you've got a project to, to keep working on. So, so that's the sand, silt and flint project that you're speaking yeah. about here, isn't it? Do you want to tell us a bit more that, about that? Um, that's kind of developed into this massive thing which is growing arms and legs and everything um it's started basically from the pandemic as well was because there wasn't anywhere to go and nothing to do i was just spending loads of time just walking locally as i'll, I'll go a lot to banff beach to walk i go to benny he a lot and um i came across these like tourism no notice boards telling a story of like a local legend and at Banff Beach it was the story of a girl called Maggie Macklin and at uh, Benny Hay there was the story of John Hosey and I, because I'd been doing so much walking um, I thought it would be a really nice thing to combine walking with some creative projects so I started brewing up the idea of making songs based on those stories. So I had a couple of songs that I'd started, one about um, Hosey's Well at Benny Hay and the other um, about the girl Maggie Macklin at Banff Beach. And then my mum reminded me about the sounds of Forvey and how she took me there as a child. And how she, and then I thought, oh, that's another place I could do a story about. So then I had three stories based on different Aberdeenshire locations. And then it kind of evolved into an album. On uh, yeah, so I just thought if I've got three stories based on Aberdeenshire legends, I may as well develop that and like do a bit more research into local stories and folklore and legends and ballads and make a whole project based around that. So it, it's grown into this album called Sand, Silt, Flint, um, based on 10 different Aberdeenshire uh, locations, which have also got uh, stories or folklore attached to them, or uh, a, a traditional ballad. So I'm either, when, where there's a, uh, already existing a ballad linked to the area, I'm making my own reinterpretation in my sort of electronic style of that story, maybe just using the lyrics or maybe using some of the lyrics, or and then put in my new uh, melodies and arrangements to it, and then where there isn't an existing story, just making up a uh, sorry where there isn't an existing song, just making up one from scratch based on a story that I found in the place. Yeah, so it's really exciting. <laughs> it sounds like a, a huge piece of work. A whole album. God, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> 
It's been, um, it's keeping me busy. You know, it's great because I haven't had much to do lately, you know, with uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know. I'm sure you've had more to do. Everyone's got, had a lot to do, even when they thought they didn't have anything to do. Just taking yeah. care of herself. But that sounds yeah. sounds incredible. So um, I think you've got a website for that, haven't you? So if people want to find out more, they can they can find they can go to that that website, and I can put links to that with the video. Yeah, yeah. And uh, another aspect of the project involves the sound walks, which is another thing again. Um, I went out to a recording studio over on the west coast. I'd heard about it through my brother because he'd done some recording there. Um, and he's a sound artist as well called Jamie Smith and he told me about this mobile app called Echoes where you can uh, upload audio clips and you can make sound walks by uh, linking the audio clips to geographic locations. So when you're walking along with your headphones and your um, mobile phone, the audio is uh, triggered by GPS, so you can maybe sort of go on a route and uh, yeah, so I did a project that um, linked to the legend about the Sands of Forvey um, and linked to that I had the film which Dude and Dance made and I also did a sound walk through the, at the beginning of the sand dunes with audio clips, bits of the song mixed in with some spoken word to tell an abstracted version of the, the legend of the two sisters. So you like walk through the sand dunes and it was very atmospheric. And, um, it's yes. incredibly <laughs> atmospheric, especially if you go when the heart is <laughs> coming in, <laughs> as we did. Yes. Yeah. And th this is available for people just to, to go into at any point now it's set up. Isn't yeah. it? Was there, yeah. Um, maybe when we f figure out this, we'll, I'll give you the link to that sound walk as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You just get the app on your phone, the Echoes yeah. app, and then Definitely you can. The Echoes app, yeah. So eventually there will be one of those walks for each song on the album. That will be fantastic because I, I really enjoyed, in fact, that, that walk wasn't one that was as familiar to me. Um, down at Forby, it was a it was a slightly different um place and it was incredibly eerie the landscape there and you're so close to the beach but it's kind of out of sight and it's yeah it it, it was really great to experience that with the with the sound as well it brought mm. it to life yeah Definitely. yeah and what was um it made that especially interesting for me was some of the sound clips was um I just when I came back from New Zealand to live back in um, Aberdeenshire with my mum, she was doing her uh, family history project, and she discovered that a very distant, I think it's maybe my granny's great uncle. I think I'll need to check that. Was um, uh, a ballad singer called John Strachan, so I tracked down some recordings of him, and uh, so I've got him snippets of his voice in the sound walk as well which uh, yeah and i'm on the album i'll be i'm gonna do a, a version of one of the songs that he sat that he recorded he did a version of um, bonnie udney which is a very famous uh ballad about the village of udney so i'm going i'm doing my version of that as well on the album yeah it's, it's woven into not only the la the landscape but also your family history yeah yeah so it's yeah it's quite um so yeah <laughs> <Anyway>. wow <laughs> well you, you we await the next stage of that but yeah i can recommend the walk is is really uh, it's a lovely way to engage with you know in your own time and you know it's it's as you say we've all been doing so much walking but it's wonderful so I'm going to just ask a bit more about sort of digital music, which is your your okay. specialism. OK. And that you got into in Brighton, I believe, inspired yeah. by, as you mentioned, the punk, the punk scene was really important to you. And would you say there are opportunities for female artists like yourself in this particular field? Oh, God. 
and there's masses now. There's so many female producers that are doing really well, that whose music I really admire. I won't even start to mention names because it's just too many. But I think over the past few, oh, maybe over the past few years, I think there's been more and more uh, women coming to the forefront in electronic music, which is like really great. I mean, but there were like women doing music like way back, you know, like in the with um, Daphne Oram and, and Delia Derbyshire and uh, uh, for, that were people that were doing that, the, radio, uh, the radiophonic workshop from the BBC who were real uh, female music pioneers who were like a bit hidden and not really appreciated. But now like that people are become, getting to hear about them more and more and there's masses of really brilliant electronic producers around. Um, I think there's an also a, quite a few more female oriented uh, music networks that have sprung up in the past few years as well. That's one called Female Pressure. That's an international music network, but they started up um, a campaign to highlight the lack of women's representation in um, uh, lineups for festivals and, and uh, they got a big campaign going and that really brought um, brought that to the forefront, the lack of uh, live female musicians at, uh, at in festival lineups and that and, uh, and I've discovered another one recently called, um, based in Glasgow called Hen Hoose which is a um, collective of female songwriters and producers geared towards getting music more for sinks and adverts and films. So there are lots of people, because it is so now, I think now, the barriers to the, of the technological side have just completely disappeared. Like, I mean, basically, you can, like, write an album on your phone <laughs> and everybody gets you so affordable and so accessible. I mean, when I started out, to be able to make an album, you had to have, like thousands of pounds worth of digital equipment in your house or you needed to have a record company backing you so that you could use their studio but uh, gradually the, the price of the technology and, and the ease of use and the accessibility of the technology has got so much more like, easy for anybody to use yeah and, uh, and I think that's been a great barrier that a lot of women found as well is either like the the cost of it and the complication of the, the technical side. But now, it, basically, you know, if you've got a finger and an ear, you can make music if you've got something to press. Yeah, so, yeah. And it's been, um, yeah, I've loved it. I've really loved it. Uh, when I first discovered that I could make a song on my computer without having to rely on a like a studio or a band you know it's just a real sense of uh empowerment i think yeah yeah i guess it's it's just the end user or the maker is, is very directly in charge of it now without needing a lot of help or a lot of um very technical know-how um yeah although i'm sure people people do have lots of technical know-how but as you say it's a lot more accessible yeah, totally. In in a way, I would keep thinking, um, comparing it to the the punk thing again, full circle. Because then it was the idea of you didn't need uh, a, a professional training to do something. Or as long as you you'd got three chords and something to say, anybody could get up on a stage without any training or technical knowledge and be creative. And it's the same now. You don't need to have like a sound engineering degree or a music degree to to make an album. You can just do it on your phone. You know, it's um anybody can do it. It's really democratized everything. The same thing that punk was trying to do. Yeah. It perhaps also helps put women more in charge of how they um put out the content that they're making as well. Yeah, which is totally. Like and also before you had to kind of completely rely on like a music producer who 88% um, of the time was, was a man. Uh, there weren't a lot of women producers in studios. But now a lot of women are just taking control of their own sound and their own uh, direction and not having to 
like go to a record company to ask for money or back in you know it's just you can just anybody can do it i'm surprised there are more people doing it because it's so easy honestly i wrote my album on my phone what i did was i'd got i set myself a task of just randomly coming up with a rough idea and i gave myself a time limit, limit of five minutes and I got a hundred rough sketches and I didn't listen to them at all. And then I, I left it a couple of weeks and then went back and then listened to like all the rough ideas. And then out of those, we did it down. But they all, all the songs on the album started off as little snippets of ideas on my phone, which then I transferred into my um, digital music program on my laptop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's it's a good so insight good. into your working <laughs> methods. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure the, the hard bit comes when you're taking your initial idea and have to develop it into the full song. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But you, you kind of created and layered that up and um, everything being done by yourself. Fiona, or did you have any collaborators oh, there as well? Well, it's, I came up with the, all the initial sketches with the electronic sounds, and I, I basically arranged all the songs as I liked them on my own on the computer. And then for places where I thought maybe it would need some other extra in instrumentation, I either programmed that in with MIDI instruments and then got uh, got real musicians to replace what I'd done in MIDI or I got real musicians in to maybe just improvise over my electronic backings and I've had some fantastic contributions. Uh, um, Paul Anderson, the fiddle player, did a, an amazing solo over my like two finger violin solo that I'd done on my computer and it just sounded amazing. And I got a cello player who's originally from uh, Bankery called Alice Allen. I think she plays in the Scottish Chamber Orchestra. She's done some radical cello improvising on a couple of my tracks and it's just really brought it to life because uh, sometimes when you know electronic arrangements that, that maybe can be quite repetitive and static but having that live element especially with improvisation it really makes it come alive and makes it very exciting so great. that's great yeah we've got so many fantastic live musicians in this in this region as well um yeah that's that's wonderful to hear about your new collaborations um so I was just gonna kind of ask you a bit more about collaborating because Alien Lullabies, the film that you made, um, well, the music, the soundtrack that you created, which was then matched with uh, animations by Zener Alexander. And we're going to be showing that film at the Belmont Film House, which I'm really excited to sort of sit down and see it properly in that environment. Because mm. um, it, it came out, I think, about 20 um, 2016 it was, 16. it was in the Edinburgh, yeah, five years yeah, 16, 17, yeah, it's five years ago, my goodness me, yes. Yeah, yeah, Um, but uh, yeah, I was just going to ask you about these connections, how important are the connections to sort of uh, working with other artists and, and, and other art, art forms as well? Combination of... Um, moving image and music can be just so powerful and that's really exciting and I think working on music you kind of say it feels like a bit what's the word not isolated but um abstract it's, it's it needs to be connected to other things uh, um and I, I think that's why I enjoy working with filmmakers especially yeah um to make that a kind of more immersive experience with music and film as well and and also like live theatre as well I mean it's just there's nothing like a you know a live performance with like you know when you get really powerful music and, and imagery as well yeah absolutely so. and then the audience starts to form a kind of narrative even if it's an abstract select section of music and image the audience still kind of sits somewhere in their own experience 
people just like want to make sense of things. They want to make stories, don't they? And they'll have to make patterns where there might not end be a pattern existing at all. They like make some. It kind of is like something about the human brain, isn't it? We have yeah. to make things fit together and make sense, even That's though they right. might not. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, Alien Lullabies has a has a very you know strong atmospheric kind of feeling to it, as well as a very strong look. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to kind of immersing into that, as you say, yeah. and sitting well, in the I dark in a cinema the again. The Belmont, because again, full circle. That was the very first. Um, live outing we had for alien lullabies was in new zealand in a, in a little cinema there on the on the island where i was living at the time so it's like back again in a cinema which is great because like then that's giving it the huge the you know big screen like surround sound experience and it's like it's really immersive and it does kind of it's such a strong piece that really it can really kind of like sucks you into it and takes you somewhere else i think and it, I think it really needs the, that the big screen and that big sound system to create that fully. Yeah, yeah, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, Definitely. We to actually be in the audience and watching it because when I've done it in the past, I've always been performing it at the same time. So I've never actually experienced it myself from an audience point of view. So that would be very different for me. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and of course it was made pre-pandemic, but it's kind of got this dystopian kind of feel to it. So <laughs> um, it actually, yeah, I think it'd be quite interesting to watch it with the experience of what everyone's just gone through, you know, very, very close at hand. Yeah. I think could be, it could be interesting, could make some connections. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so at the moment you're really interested in making new work and just kind of wondering what your what your kind of hopes are with that at the moment with just well, continuing the album or Well, I'm just kind of thinking the next steps really for how I'm gonna present it and how it's gonna be how it's gonna go out into the world. I mean I, at the moment I'm still in the like process of making it, although it's it's almost finished. But I'm thinking, well, how am I, how's, how am I going to perform it in gigs, or am I going to do it as an installation, or what? So I'm, at the moment, I'm thinking of maybe looking for some filmmakers as well to make some pieces uh, based on the stories, and because uh, it would make sense, it would totally make sense, because the whole project is a, a storytelling thing. So to to have it along with visuals to make it a more rounded thing would be yeah so now I'm thinking of maybe doing it in galleries <laughs> oh fantastic because, because Jamie the sound artist has just been telling me about this this new technological sound development that Dolby have brought out and he did explain it to me but it's just like completely beyond my head but uh, it sounds like it would be the perfect thing for um my project doing it in like a um more of immersive surround environment rather than just straight stereo would be really suited for um, installation spaces so i'm thinking of how to combine that with visuals at some point but that's for another another year <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah it sounds like a, a lot to kind of keep you occupied in in the next wee file which is which is great um yeah i've just obviously i'm working for the, the gallery, Aberdeen Art Gallery and Museums, and I'm interested in in kind of what support there is for artists in, in the northeast of Scotland and whether there's, you know, any platforms and things that you think are, are really kind of boosting people up and really, really useful for us to, to have um, and to kind of point audiences towards as well. Yeah, um, there's two that spring to mind. Basically, the one that I'm working with, um, a company called Open Roads, who are really, really strongly promoting the North East's art scene um, and supporting artists and they're developing projects and they're helping me uh, on the um, sort of more technical and promotion side of what I'm doing. And they're... Um, the recipient of the Culture Collective 
funding and they're doing a big project based at Fitty Community Centre at the moment. And also another group who are also in the Culture Collective um, project are Devon Arts in Huntley, where um, Dude and Dance, my film collaborators, live. And I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but I know they're giving a lot of support to artists to explore ideas and develop, basically develop any projects they want um, in Huntley. And they're uh, really into supporting um, local artists for that. So that's two that spring to mind. Um, and in the city, I know that the anatomy rooms are really good at um, giving support to up and coming um, emerging artists through the ga um, gallery space and studio space that they have there. And um, what else? Oh, I'm not sure if what, what else is going on. I'm sure there must be. Well, those are great organisations to, to, to point people towards if they don't already know know their work you know they really they all they all, all as you say give a lot of time and space to the ideas development mm. yeah well, also as sort of, well as platforms for their work shop as well they do i've done and i've done a residency with them in the past they're um getting more artists involved in uh their in their residency programs and things. what was that last one sorry scottish sculpture workshop oh yeah yeah in London, London yeah. yeah yeah so we're, we're actually you know although um comparisons are often made to central belt in fact you know we're quite well served with really um individual and kind of supportive organizations yeah um, that, that are a surprise to see when yeah it, yeah they're not always where you might think to yeah yeah spread out it is difficult to kind of make networks and, and to interact with them but they are, there are things there they are, they are there yeah yeah that's great um and of course you know there's there's various residency programs and things aren't they We're offered by different different arts organizations in the city and the shire oh, yes, the, um, aberdeen performing arts as well they've got um, mm. um associate artist program that's how this project all started out actually was through and Aberdeen Performing Arts Residency there. Yeah, so the sort of little seeds of ideas that are developed in that re residency have kind of grown out into the, the album now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all that all that help at the beginning of an idea is yeah. really important, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's it's been so interesting, and you know, you and I could, could keep talking for, uh, for all day, really. Um, <laughs> Uh, because there's just so many different strands we could talk about um, but as you mentioned earlier I'm going to bring it back to the gallery and ask if there is a favourite space there or a particular artwork or something that's inspired you perhaps doesn't have to have been connected with Aberdeen Art Gallery but I'm just I'm just asking the question <laughs> um did I not ask answer that before though I well, you said you said you said a wonderful thing about coming in and remembering doing choreography. Oh yeah, in, it's in the, the it's sculpture one, court. So one, is it the space um, itself? Kind of that one, the space itself was like so important to me, and also that one particular sculpture. But I don't know who. It, I've got a screenshot of it here. Can I share my screen? Oh, um, you can have a go. Uh, <laughs> try. Um, it's. The, uh, no, how do I share my screen? I think you would need. Oh, hang on, here we go. You get a square with an arrow in it. Um. No, I can't do. It. Can I describe? Is it? I don't you even. You can describe it, and I can. I can. We can make a link to it. It's um metal. It's like metal tube, a curvy metal tube. Oh yeah. Is it still there? Sexy by pa Paolozzi. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes, it's still there. Quite large scale metal yeah. tubes. So yes. that's, that's been there. I don't know how long it's been there, but it was there when I was like 16 or something. And that's just, whenever I think of Aberdeen Art Gallery, that's just like, poof, comes in my head. And I can see my little, you know, eight-year-old kids jumping around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Tell me who it was by again. Paolozzi. Okay. okay. Um, 
yeah, Italian, but I think Edinburgh based uh, sculptor. Um, yeah, it's a great piece, isn't it? It's really playful yeah. and very memorable. Yes. And yeah. it is at the moment in Gallery One, collecting art in the art gallery. Oh, so it's not in the, in the, in the middle sculpture It's not in the middle anymore, no. Um, we're, because we're hosting British Art Show just now, um, it's all British Art Show pieces that are in the in the sculpture court at the moment. That is such an amazing space. I love that space. I remember when the art gallery opened, reopened after the refurbishment, there was a big event on and you had a DJ in there and it was just like such a special thing to have like you know techno music in the middle of the Aberdeen Art Gallery. I must admit the acoustics were rubbish but <laughs> for the idea of it, just like the fact that we were like drinking wine like you know having a little dance to like this amazing. Yeah we yeah, were blissfully that... unaware of what was of the, the fact that that was our days were numbered for those types of events. <laughs> And also, I remember um, I didn't I didn't participate. I wish I had the um, silent disco thing when everyone was yeah. dancing around. Oh, that was such fun! That yeah. looked really looked such fun. Yeah, yeah, that that was really fun. I I was I did I think four of four of those that night. I, my feet were really <laughs> totally sore after all of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that 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 was great. And and obviously, you know. The gallery is there for so many different audiences so yeah. the gallery lights and things we really hope to to get them back at some stage once we're able to i mean because at one point let's face it there were, everything was shut the music hall wasn't there and the gallery you know the gallery was shut and there was like nothing happening in aberdeen it just really did feel like a wasteland but when it started when it opened again going oh gosh yes you know I feel a bit more optimistic that there's like some culture and some life in Aberdeen again. Yeah I think I think it really is it's like life at the heart of the the city and I think I think we underestimate that sometimes just how how important that is to people's um, morale and well-being and um, just kind of you know, yeah. part of things again. Yeah and then knowing that there's a, a venue that's a bit connected to culture you know something that's away from like the shopping malls or you know market yeah. or something that I mean even if people don't go to to see the art there's so many people there local people as I it, use it as like just somewhere to meet and have a coffee and have lunch and it's or just that the I'll meet you at the art gallery it's just like a place to go that's like not linked to commercial stuff you know not linked to business just that it's like a little haven that's lovely yeah yeah, yeah. I, I I think lots of people feel really fondly and similarly about about that space, and yeah. it it has it is wonderful now. It's been re redeveloped it, as well. And it does seem to be the only space in town, that, as far as I can think of, that isn't linked to you know making money, really. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know the arts, the arts and culture are are such a key part to our cities aren't they so yeah and and giving space to to artworks and performances as well so, no I was just going to say thank you so much for being part of our program so uh, you know it's great to introduce you um this way to people that that maybe don't know you or people already know you and really interested in your music and um it's been really lovely to talk to you so thank yes, you so really much yeah nice to have a chat even though yeah. it's on, on zoom or whatever <laughs> yeah yeah, well, we, we, we must meet in person soon, but I thank know. you so much for your time, Definitely. Fiona. Yeah, thanks so much. I really enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Okay, thanks, Fiona. Bye. Bye. Bye.